Welcome to the show, Darren. How are you doing today? Very good, Eric. Thanks for having me. It's, it's great to have you here. Uh, I call this time the chaos time, as we've kind of been in this last, like, short time before the election and we're not knowing what's around the corner as we get to the election uh, no. and what leads after it. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. What I want to discuss with you and I love is that you are an agency owner in the mm -hmm. marketing space, which has been one of those things that I think March happened and people started going, okay, well now we're officially, and I like to say shooting, we're all shooting on the same hoop. All of a sudden, everybody realized, okay, that's not untrue. We are. We're in the same boat with everybody else. We need advertising dollars. People, I mean, people are calling us up going, and, I, and I'm referring them to whoever I could find. Now I know you. I'm referring them to you. But they're like calling me up. They're like, hey, Eric, uh, how do I do ads? I'm like, on what? Like, on Facebook. Do you have an ad account yet? No, I'm just, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do, but... People are on TV telling me to do ads. And I'm like, well, what kind of marketing? What's your call to, I'm saying CTA. And I'm like watching small business owners go, what the? The, the, gla the yeah. glaze over? The glaze over of like, oh my God, I didn't know we weren't doing any of this. Or we're going to fix our website. And it feels like Dunder Mifflin 2001 website is what they're showing with the little guy will be back sweeping. That's what a lot of this is. So, so let me ask you, Darren, as you run an agency and, and you're sitting here, here we are in the epitome of 2020. Let's take the election out of it. Remote life is where we're at. Digital is where we're all living, and that's not going away. I, coronavirus is not disappearing, no matter as many people want to like say it's disappearing. It's not. The numbers don't say that. Uh, and we see that as both avid sports fans, we don't see fans and stands. Uh, well, lots of fans and stands are in pods, which I've heard are heavily controlled. So here we are. We're talking about marketing. What have you seen? Kind of give us like a little background on yourself real fast about your agency. But then more, the first question I have for you is like, what are you telling business owners when they call you up and they're like, Darren, and the glazed eyes come over and anything that they comes out of their mouth afterwards, it's just like they're stunned that they're so both behind the eight ball here with uh, marketing in general, moving even forward into a new year. Yeah, for us, it's been, um, it's actually been kind of cool because we're, we're probably pr predominantly digital. So our clients, our, our team, we have a 16-person you know, shop here in suburban New Jersey, and we've done a good job of educating them. Um, my background, I you know, graduated Lehigh University back in 2000, started in you know, New York City as a TV buyer. So my background is all traditional. Um, I started DSM in 05, where we're going to be 14 in February, and it was really like Jerry Maguire. Um, quit, quit my old agency instead of the goldfish walking out. I, I grabbed my laptop, went to Ikea, bought some furniture. Uh, my wife and mother-in-law were away uh, in Florida, and they called me that night, and they're like, how was, how was your trip to D.C.? At the time, I was looking on T-Mobile. And I said, oh, it was great. I took the train back up from D.C., uh, and I think I'm going to start my own agency. My wife was like, oh, that's you know great. When? Like a year? I'm like, Monday. <laughs> um, and that was really how it started and over time you know we built it from one person in a front porch to you know 16 people what we are today uh, in 6600 square feet but we do a really good job educating our clients so for us while we've had some non-essential clients which is definitely been a struggle um where they had to shut down their businesses temporarily or, or what have you um we really have taken the time to be mindful about how to train them when they come on. A lot of the businesses we have, uh, we have one national account. Um, predominantly, our businesses are within 100, 150 miles of where we are in New Jersey because um, that face-to-face -face is important. Um, but we've seen our clients, you know, we're, we're off a few percent last year and last year, was our best year. It was the second year we placed in the Inc. 5000 list. Um, we've grown a tremendous amount. And um, I, I don't know how, how else to say it other than the kudos go to, to our team for really educating, I think, what you're talking about and kind of like the people that are like, oh my God, the Dunder Mifflin of the world where they're like, oh my gosh, there's Facebook and you know we can advertise on Instagram and like LinkedIn's a tool. Like our clients already 
have an idea of how to leverage that. And they've done a really good job over the last, call it five years. Um, that's when we started the digital side of the agency. Um, and it's really a testament to them. So we have clients that unfortunately due to things that were out of their control had to had to stop, you know, or, or go into, um, you know, a temporary shutdown due to being non-essential. But other than that, we've done a really good job and we've actually, you know, kind of held the course in 2020. Um, I think that's important. I don't think you're going to have another year. Last year we were up, you know, 190% over 2018. You're not going to have another year like that. Um, but we've done a good job of educating our clients. And I think that's what will ultimately carry the relationship into the future. Yep. And, and I agree with you because I'll say that about even our business, even though it's been a little different, I mean, nothing will top our 2019 and our 2020 started off great. Like we were on like this woo, and I was like, holy Toledo Batman. And I mean, it's been good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's been a wonderful and we have an amazing team and I love them all to death. But yep. I think one of the things is a lot of people weren't expecting it and everybody's like, but if your business didn't go down and, and it sucked for those that did and we're seeing it in the retail industry, but a lot of people aren't paying attention. Uh, I think that's one of the big things is people get so caught up in 2020 that if you pop your head up over the out of the gopher hole right now and you realize it's October, it's almost yeah. November. Uh, for me, I'm already thinking January. I mean, we're already placing people on shows in January and February. I mean, that's how far out some of these are doing. These are different, obviously not talk big daytime shows that you see every day that have different viewers, but some other bigger shows down the way. So are you seeing that in marketing too? Are you seeing folks who are shocked that they're so focused on 2020? It's like they have the blinders on. They're like, okay, someday we're gonna get over this. And it, maybe not your clients, obviously you get to like work with yours that are close by and it sounds like they're media trained, but I'm talking about those small to medium businesses that are new to the whole thing. I mean, even to the point, and this might be like a question probably years ago when you started to ask, but when they're like, okay, we need a marketing agency. And when, to me, it's always Silicon Valley background. I could tell you, well, a marketing agency is cheaper than hiring people always because there's, it's easier. You give it out to somebody and they go do their job. And the fact that you said you like to do face-to-face, -face, oh my goodness, that's that's why we hired everybody in the Bay Area. paid a fortune for it, but we lived in the Bay. It just was easier to work with people that were right there that you could see and talk and white on a whiteboard. So what sure. advice are you giving to businesses or would you give to small businesses as they're like, okay, we need a marketing team. We need to hit this right. We don't understand any of this stuff. This is, we know it from watching Gary V. No knock to Gary, like Gary a lot, but you know, that's what, like, we, get, like, that's what we get. So what advice do you give to those folks? Very simply, prior to the call, we were talking about it a little bit. I feel um, a lot of people got so myopic in their view of how things were going. And like, so into 2020, uh, you know, the drawstrings of the hoodie that you're wearing, undo them, like open up the drawstring and like, there's going to be a January 1st, 2021, people. Trust me on this. Unless the meteor hits Earth in the next like two and a half months, it's going to happen. So plan. Like, the only thing you can do, I, I, I have conversations with business owners all day, and I'll tell you, you control what you can control. You try to do the best you can to forecast. But in 14 and a half years of doing this, every best laid plant, sometimes you fall into a pile of food. It happens. Other times you can prepare and plan and you think you have everything covered and the plan goes sideways. It just happens. So what I will tell you is, Next year, 2021 will come. Do the best you can in order to ensure with our clients right now, we're planning, you know, we're, some of our clients are planning second quarter already, similar to what you're saying, like you're placing people on shows, you know, in January and February, like it's going to be here before you know it. Yeah. Like we're hitting Halloween <laughs> in like blink of an eye, it's going to be Thanksgiving. And then Christmas is going to come like two and a half minutes later. And then, oh my gosh, it's going to be 2021. So plan, prepare. Um, if you if you have a business that you have put in, put put into a context of like you've built it up, know that there's a, a, a 
a place for an agency. Again, not all businesses are, I'm an ad, you know, I own an agency. I'm an advocate that not all people are the right fits for agencies. Some businesses, you know, it, it might behoove them to have somebody in house. Um, but that being said, I, I think it's, it's really important to plan and understand that you can control what you can control and everything else you have to kind of let play out like i'm a i'm a big i'm a huge 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 proponent of not worrying about something that hasn't happened yet like what can you possibly do you're worrying about something like, put that into the grand scheme of like life and I, this is not just business it's like personal i tell my kids i have an 11 and 9 and a 5 year old my 5 year old is right up behind me somewhere over here you can see her like don't worry about something you can control you had a test today you study do the best you can and let the chips fall where they may <laughs> and, and that's true i mean and, and that goes uh, that goes with my sports background i love that belief because i tell my kids the same thing i'm like i know it's cheesy and i know the you know wayne gretzky you know you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take but i think that's so true you go you take your test you same thing with sports and by the way shout out to lehigh uh i'm here in portland oregon and we have one of your famous uh grads plays for our portland trailblazers the wonderful and great cj mccullum we love cj we're huge cj fans i mean we know a lot about weaver state and lehigh because we have dame and we have cj so two smaller schools but we just look at lehigh just i have to talk sports for a second because you talk about lehigh and cj uh we we've seen the photos as fans of cj when he first showed up when he was this scrawny little dude dribbling around for you guys he's not that little dude anymore because we saw him pre-covid out in public and we were at the same restaurant together and he was really cool uh and i was like you're, you're pretty big <laughs> compared to the way that you normally i mean he's six three so he's taller than me so that means he's super tall but that's just my, my, my claim to fame when when that team that was a moment in my life i'll never forget it's one of those moments where you remember where you are because lehigh doesn't have that many big sport other than lehigh lafayette which is like the second oldest like football rivalry in the yeah. in the country um when my senior year uh they when they beat duke we played duke the first game of the season and uh at stabler arena in beth in uh at lehigh in bethlehem and got blown out by like 68 points and all i remember was sitting there next to my roommate and being like Dude, why are we here? With the worst thing ever. It, it was Duke. Like Duke never comes to Lehigh, so we're like, let's go. It was like, yeah. dude, we left after like ten minutes. We're like, dude, let's just go to a frat party or something. Like this sucks. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. And then CJ delivers and makes you guys really happy. So I mean, and then CJ, I couldn't to... resist. There was no way we were getting off this with the with the Lehigh comment that I wasn't going to bring that out. I always talk about Rip City. It is behind me on the show and. Uh, just yeah cj we, we're big fan i mean i'm i'm all blazered out just so you know it's never too far away in my life having some portland trailblazer gear near me so you said lehigh so it's been great having you on i, I feel like we kind of bounced around on subjects we'll have to have you back on uh, as we get into the holidays oh before you go we have a couple seconds here maybe two minutes uh at most what is your tips for getting ready for obviously black friday is really close if you are a brand in marketing Black Friday to me, and this is my opinion, you could say, Eric, you're right or you're wrong, and we could just move on and it could be a dead subject. Black Friday to me, the best marketing approach is to do it all November long like other big brands are starting to do. Don't try to hold out for one because of the shipping issues. If you are an e-commerce brand using digital media to do anything, that's already been basically told that they've met their maximum already, which is crazy to think about uh, going into it. So what is your tips for people? Real quick, two or three tips to survive the upcoming blitz for the holidays for anybody who's out there in small business land for digital marketing for, for, yeah for right now i would say due to the delays in shipping start black friday right now in october like go have at it uh if you got a product you think it's going to be something that is viable during the holiday season i'd have at it in october get it going crank it up as quickly as you can um, I would say second point, stay the course. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, there is nothing that you are to the, to the sports analogy that you brought up controlling the things you can, you know, um, there's only so much you're going to be able to control and, and 
if you stay the course of the principles that got you. My dad was an old school guy. Um, if you stay true to the things that got you to where you were, and I'm not saying rest on your laurels, but stay true to the things that got you there. And the third thing that I will say, and this is not just for small businesses, this is for everybody, whether you're in a successful business that's going up, up, up during COVID or you're staying flat or you're, or you're kind of like, you know, going in the tank a little bit. Um, everybody is going through this together for the first time. Nobody knows what is going to happen. This is the first time, unless you're 103 years old or whenever it was 102 years old in 1918, um, you know, nobody's gone through a global pandemic. So we're all going through this for the first time, at least in my generation, I'm 43. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. And I try to explain that to the people that we work with. I try to explain it to my family, the kid, my kids. Um, uh, being open and honest and going through it together, I think there we'll all have a lot more strength coming out of this if we support each other and if we try to empower one another. Um, I think it's really important. Yeah. But and at the end of the day, Eric, I don't know if you've gone through a global pandemic before, but I don't know what the heck is going to happen tomorrow. So I, <laughs> no, I, we're the same age. So if you haven't been through one, I haven't been through one either. I've been to third world countries, if that counts, but uh, nothing like what we're going through now. I think it's all uncharted territory is kind of what mm -hmm. I tell everybody. We all we all everybody's equal for the first time ever, especially in business. Even the big brands. I mean, I'm right here in you know, Nikeville, USA in Beaverton, Oregon, home of probably one of the biggest brands that counters everything. When I saw that they were having struggles, then I sat down with a few of my friends that work for Nike and I asked the question. I was like, hey, what's going on with you guys? You guys lead. When it comes to marketing, it's Nike. They survive right. everything. They're like, and their marketing team's on point. Their PR team's on point. Talk about a team that's just on point. They're like, look, we know it's going to happen. We're just like everybody else. We're seeing as it develops and we kind of counter as we go. And, you know, it's, we're all kind of pitching water. That's what I kind of tell my kids is this is how business is right now. Or mm -hmm. I'm a football guy calling an audible. I feel like I'm Peyton Manning at the line yelling Omaha, Omaha, as we're just, mm -hmm. you got to make calls and you have to teach your clients to do that. And I always say that, and I've heard you say that, like you have to be able to have a voice, especially if you're a business owner, have a voice, talk to your agency or as an agency owner, you need to be able to say, Hey, this is what's going, but understand like AB testing, you know, this is like a real life AB test. If we see something, we're going to call an audible and you might, might run a slant route right now just because it makes more sense and we can get you the ball down the field. So I, I think that's a big thing. But, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Your insight has been amazing. Uh, we definitely need to have you back on. You uh, just simply get it, Darren. I love it because this is a fun conversation because people just think marketing's easy. They just think we just show up, read a Gary V book, and we're good, right? It's what Gary does or Grant does or, you know, I watched Boiler Room, so that's how I make money. It's like, no, you're not the Wolf of Wall Street. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. Market marketing is a great, has been a great challenge for me. I graduated Lehigh with a history degree. I was in no way going to go into marketing and I needed a job. My mom was like, dude, you got like a month to, to get a job or you're <laughs> out. Yeah, that was, that was it. Um, so when, you know, m marketing for me has been a great, it's what we preach to our clients is we fail fast yep. and that failing fast and be, and being able to stay nimble, that's what's going to make you successful. Yep, absolutely. So. I, I agree with you. So I want to thank you. Let me come back to the camera. That would make more sense if I on camera when I say this. Uh, I want to thank you so much, Darren, for coming on the show, giving your insight. Uh, everyone else, you could go down and click in the links. If you're watching on C-Suite TV, just scroll down and you'll see the links to connect with Darren on social and his agency. Get to the point with Eric Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell. Yeah. Let's get to the point.